DIY, DSP.com. Here's Noah uh, telling you how to make music instruments using the power of digital signal processing. So what is on my bench tonight? Let's take a look. This is an electric eel. This is a generator-based music instrument. It's got a couple of different parts here. And I built this about six or seven years ago. There's a long story behind it. I won't get into just yet. But um, it was used in a couple performances in California. And um, then it got, it, it moved around from different studios. And we're here in my awesome new studio space in the Framingham Makerspace. So it's time to get this puppy going again. So first of all, what have we got? This is just a serial cable used to... Uh, communicate to the computer. So let's put that over here for now. This is the generator module. This is, this is the generator electronics. It's got some capacitors, a dual AC rectifier, uh, and then it's got a TIP120 amplifier chip on here, and everything's connected via spring terminals. So as we see, it's completely disconnected at this point. Let's put that over here. Now we've got the guitar strap. And this shows you how long ago I did this. This is actually just held on with a zip tie. So I'm going to um, rejuvenate this thing and make a better, better connection. Um, you can see it's not even connected to the instrument body at all right now. Uh, so here's the instrument body itself. It's based on a mailing tube. You can see down the end. And um, oh, it's got the speaker at the far end here. And then it's got the resonating body here with the cardinal and uh, what do you call those things, graphics. Um, now I see there's some more electronics inside, so let's pull that out. Okay, here's the knobs. So the knobs also completely disconnected. And here is, this is, this is really old. This is the CPU board um, based on the Atmega 32. It's just running a little faster than your typical Arduino chip. Um, nothing's hooked into it at all. And then over here is the uh, regulator chip. So j just to go quickly into the theory. Well, actually, before we get to the theory, there's this part here. This is actually the um, head from an old printer. It used to slide back and forth. So let's unwrap these cables. Uh, Okay, so we have a couple pairs, we have a couple of things going on. First of all, here's the stepper motor component. Okay, this used to drive the print head back and forth inside the printer. And it's being repurposed as a generator now. So that means when the player back drives this, then it's putting an electrical current out on these, these pair, on these four wires, okay? And that, into, that drives the instrument. This instrument, it, although it's digital, you can use digital signal processing, you can custom it, make synthesizer sounds, affects everything. You do not need to plug it into a wall, you don't need batteries, you don't need to recharge it. Um, the, the electrical power back driving from the, the stepper motors gets rectified and doubled on here and turned into DC. That DC drives this regulator here, that regulator drives this CPU, that CPU generates the signal to um, go to the amplifier, and the amplifier is right here, and then that leads to the speaker, which you saw on the instrument. So right now, this is in a, a, a half a dozen pieces, and we can see that, what's this? Oh, this is the, the speaker wires right here, I presume. One, one key thing that's missing here is uh, the keyboard itself, so that's probably still in storage somewhere. So I'm going to have to go through some boxes and find it, and in a future episode we're going to uh, hook that up. But tell you what, just uh, to be spontaneous here, let's see if we can get the generator connected to the regulator, or, or get it to the voltage doubler. So this has some... Um, this is actually made with a, uh, a laser cutter. It's a circuit board, but it's completely laser cut. So it's got through holes and soldering and etching. So I can see here, 
There's generator input one, that's an AC pair, and generator input two. So let's connect up the generator and see what we get. Speaker terminals. That's one. That's two. That's three. And that's four. Uh, I don't have a, a voltage meter over here, so I'm just going to pause this for one sec. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Okay, I'm back. I got myself just a basic multimeter, and uh, what we're going to do. Oops. I'm going to connect it to these alligator leads, and these alligator leads I'm going to put into key points on the circuit where I believe the voltage is supposed to come out. So I think that's here, power out. Check the polarity there. And this is ground, because ground has common to those. So we can see we got no voltage so far. We haven't done anything. And now we're going to arrange that all so we can see that voltage maybe. All right, now I'm going to slide the slider and look at that. We picked up three volts in our capacitor right away, just with a little tiny movement. So let's move it again. There, we like peaked up at five. So let's move it back. When you're playing it, you pretty much move like this, almost like a guitar. So we can see we're hitting about eight uh, the peak. All right, so that's the that's the next stage, and notice it decays uh, um, slowly. So w we made it this far. Let's just push our luck. Let's see if we can use this to drive the uh, the voltage regulator. All right. So the voltage regulator takes in a voltage from there and there. At least it's supposed to, in theory. Some, a, a lot of these are kind of strange. And then it produces like a three volt output here. So I think that's doubly carried over there because of complex technical reasons. Be, because, you know why? It's because the CPU is actually able to measure the incoming voltage and respond to how um, hard you're playing. So when you play very hard, the CPU is able to make the volume louder. So let's hook on to this ground terminal here and this positive terminal here. Oh, this is such a bad lead. All right. And now we're going to oops, we're going to slide the regulator and we're going to look for some voltage on here that's coming out of the regulator. We believe there's voltage going in. Oh no, wait, we haven't connected this over there yet, have we? Okay, I think we're going to need one more pair of wires, so I'm going to go get some. Pause. And I'm back. I got myself uh, some basic speaker wire here. And I'm going to connect this to the power out pins. So I'm going to use this slightly copper reddish one for the red and this slightly gray one for the black. And then, now we're going to disconnect that. All right, so now theoretically we can just drive the generator and we should see this regulate up to three volts or so, 3.3. Ah, but I'm not seeing it happen. Okay, so <laughs> that may be the end. Let's just verify that we got some voltage here. drive this. Okay, so something's not right because we're not even seeing the voltage on there. Could one of these come loose? Move you back. Oh, 
they look okay. Uh, could it just be that this came loose? Distinctly possible. So that's reconnected. Yeah, we see a little bit of a juice there. The drive, it goes right up. Okay, so that's a good sign. Coming out of here, we have some juice. So once again, let's wire up this thing. We'll watch the vaults. We'll watch the vaults come out. That's to the meter, and now here's the ground. And then, oh, this is actually just the voltage in. Okay, yeah. So we see that reaches a nice peak of 15. So now, this pin over here is the three volt out. Ready? Oh, this is good. We already see something on there. It's less than three because we're not charging. And now, ooh, all right, that's not good. We're seeing, oh, it's because we're metering. Ah, okay. Tell I haven't used this in a long time. We're still metering the input. We actually want to meter the output like this. Can we get to that pin somehow? Yes, okay. All right, ready and go. What? Still seeing the high voltage. Um. If that's the case, then that means that the high voltage is bleeding right through this thing. And it's not regulating at all. Yeah, that seems to be the case here. Oh, you know what I just realized? I just... <laughs> I just took a little close look at this circuit board. Tell me if you can see the same thing I see on there. Right there, next to that chip, what does it say? burnt out so i must have diagnosed this years ago and ri written burnt out on there and uh okay so now i know what i'm going to do in my next episode i'm going to be replacing this voltage regulator with one that's not working i i could maybe replace this ic but the way this is designed it's all soldered it's all through hole that would, seems like a lot of work i don't know if i have any of those ic's i don't know but uh, yeah, oh, you can see all the dates I was doing stuff on here. Looks like 2010, June of 2010 and May of 2010. All right, so thanks for watching. Um, this is just one aspect of the channel where I'm going to go through and just um, rejuvenate a whole bunch of classic instruments. I'm also going to show you the um, development of a bunch of brand new ones. And I'm going to answer any and all your questions that give you mentorship on designing, building, and playing uh, digital music instruments based on digital signal processing. That's it. That's DIYDSP.com.